Now, it's not a secret. I'm a huge fan of the M1 Mac Mini, although I've had a few struggles with it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. You guys can check those out in the videos I have for you guys down below right after this one, of course. But what you didn't know is when you guys buy an M1 Mac Mini, the buying process don't just stop right there. There's a ton of other things that you guys need to be able to complete your M1 Mac Mini setup. And I'm about to tell you guys what they are. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So it's been about two months now since I copped the M1 Mac Mini Wow. Low pro, fresh in the aisles, 16 to 8 gigabytes. Tell me what's your style. I'm here to tell you if it's good. If it's not, then it's not worthwhile. Let's see, hold up, performance is great. Apple chips stand up right now. Let's go, let's go. No overheating, got grace the jigs up. Best desktop, I own the glow up. Let's get into this video and complete our two month doc order routine checkup. <laughs> I'm back with these bars, shining through the shadows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now while I spit bar live through stereo. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing you guys are gonna need right out of the gate is a monitor. But before I actually tell you guys which monitor that I would personally check out, I want you guys right now to go ahead and comment down below how many likes are on this video at the time that you guys are watching. And I got a little something for you guys at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get back to the monitor. Now, if you guys don't know, the Mac Mini is just the computer portion of the puzzle. Meaning, you guys still need something that's gonna be able to output to what you guys can actually see for you guys to be able to use it. Now, if you guys are curious, on the monitors that I use, then I personally use the 34 inch curved monitors. I'll link the model name right here on the screen as well as down in the description section below. I came front. In the beginning, I had bought, you know, the last gen version of these monitors and I had to actually take them back twice for issues that I had with them. When I went back to the last time to Micro Center and I swapped them out, they had told me that LG had actually discontinued that model. So they went ahead and upgraded me to the newest models that I have, which those have been dope ever since. So much that I end up buying three of them. There's two over here and you guys can see the one that's right here behind me so shout out to Michael Center for hooking your boy up with that sweet little deal but you know we gonna we gonna keep that one on the hush hush you know they they looked out for your boy but they ain't a sponsor this video but Michael Center I'm just saying if y'all want to sponsor your boy you know just let me know I'm I'm here for y'all squad if y'all want to go out on Twitter and let them know tag them in it tag your boy in and say yo you need to collab with C Kid you know you know I got some fire content I could bring y'all way if y'all went ahead and did that so you know, just go ahead and head on over to Twitter and do that. <laughs> All right, so the next thing you guys are gonna need to find is a keyboard as well as a mouse that works best for you. The very first obvious choice I would recommend that's gonna actually work well, and it's also gonna be very compatible with the Mac Mini, and that is the Apple Magic Keyboard as well as the Apple Magic Mouse. Now, I used to swear up and down by this mouse, guys. It was like the best combo, and trust me, it really is. It's a good combo, and it works well with the Apple ecosystem because with that keyboard and mouse, you can actually use it on the iPad Pro as well as Apple TV because it works with the Bluetooth connection. I used to actually use that combo until my workflow changed and I needed to actually have something that would help me edit my videos a whole lot faster. Once my guys Terry and my guy CJ kept telling me, they kept stressing to me, they was like, yo, you need to get the MX Master Mouse. So I caved in, I said, forget it, y'all bugging me about it. I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna trade in my Magic Mouse for this. And when I tell you guys, I tried the Logitech Mouse, guys, I fell in love with it so much that I ended up buying the Logitech MX Keys, which is the keyboard for that whole mouse and keyboard combo. What's dope about this mouse is it allows you guys to be able to edit every button on the mouse to be able to do certain functions in specific individual applications that you guys are using. What do I mean, see kids? So for example, if I'm in Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro and I program the buttons here on the side to zoom in on my video timeline, which makes it way super faster to be able to edit videos. Let's say I'm in Chrome or Safari browser, those same buttons are gonna allow me to go backwards and forwards in my browser. So the versatility with this mouse, guys, is endless and it hands down is the best mouse I've ever used. Now when it comes to the keyboard what's dope about this one is if you have multiple setups like that i do right now i have a setup over here i got a setup that's behind me right here i can switch between three different computers so fast with just using the buttons that's on the keyboard in itself what's also cool is that it's backlit which is just an extra bonus and the battery life on them is really good too the mouse lasts much longer than the keyboard but i typically charge my keyboard up you know maybe like once every two weeks and then the mouse in itself like literally once a month both of them hands down is a must cop for sure now the next thing that i recommend you guys buy is an external storage drive now see kid can i just buy the two terabyte option when i actually buy the mac mini yes you can do that 
but no, I don't recommend it for two reasons. The first reason I don't recommend this is because if you guys are the type of people and you save everything to your internal hard drive, over time, guys, it's gonna slow down your machine considerably because of unknown files that will also be stored on there that could just run in the background, just gonna kill your stuff over time and it's gonna have your machine working way harder than it needs to be and that's just not the way. The second reason I don't recommend you guys buy the internal storage from Apple and that is because of the cost. Now, Apple charges a bag bag, and I mean a bag bag for storage, and this is where you guys can save money at. And you know me, I'm all about saving some ducats. So for example, Apple charges you guys $800 for two terabytes of storage. Now, if you out here and you like, well, see kid, they are giving us two terabytes of SSD storage for that price. Okay, check this out. Now, for starters, you guys can buy two terabyte SSD Samsung T5 drives. That's only gonna cost you 229 bucks. This puts $571 back into your pocket that you can go use to buy that monitor that I told you about. But you're like, well, see kid, I don't wanna actually have something hanging like a dongle off to the side of my Mac mini. I want something that's gonna be a little bit more internal storage like, well, Trust me, okay, I got you on this one. You can buy a USB-C hub that gives you extra ports as well as include a hard drive enclosure for you guys to be able to put your own internal SSD inside of it. It only costs $85. So for the drive that I use, I use the Samsung 860 Evo two terabyte SATA 3 internal SSD drive. Whew. That cost me 289 bucks. Now, if you add that to the 85, that's $383 opposed to paying $800, saving you guys $417, and you're getting more ports with it while still keeping that clean internal looking setup. Now, if you guys think I'm capping, I have the exact same setup. I own the USB-C hub station for my M1 Mac mini. I also store everything on this thing. It's super blazing fast for me. I edit all my 4K videos, including this one right here, and I store all my files on it. And then I also have right here, let me let me pull it up for you guys. Y'all don't think I'm capping out here. I got two of the T5 SSD drive from Samsung. Uh, both of these are one terabyte each. They work just fine for me. I haven't had any issues with them and I highly recommend these things. And I just really just keep them on here using Velcro. I mean, it just works easier that way. All right, so the next thing we gotta talk about is having a dual monitor set up. What you will need if you guys don't have a monitor that has Thunderbolt ports on it. If you want this setup that I have right here, you guys have to buy something like this. This is the Cal Digit TS3 Plus and I highly recommend it, guys. I can't lie to you guys. It was kind of pricey, it was kind of a bag bag, but but with the savings from the storage option that I just told you guys about, you got extra bag bags for this dual display setup and do it the right way. Now, I have one of my monitors set up using HDMI and then the other one going display port into the Cal Digit, and it works perfectly and I haven't had any problems with it at all. Now I will say you will have to do some color calibrations with each monitor to match because you are using two different input types that provides different levels of output quality. Once you guys calibrate your monitors right, you gonna be good to go with the colors 100%. All right, so the last thing here is, I mean, I guess it's not really necessary because the M1 Mac mini does have internal speakers that you guys can play and listen to your music from, but I mean, let's be honest, y'all. Like, y'all already know the quality coming out of there is just not gonna be the best. Yeah, it's loud and all, but you know, it ain't on speaker level qualities. There's actually two different options you can actually do here. One I do recommend more over the other. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one. The first option, believe it or not, you can actually use the HomePod mini speakers and use them as stereo speakers with with your M1 Mac Mini. Right out of the box, they will not pair for you guys to be able to use them stereo speakers with the M1 Mac Mini. You do have to do some Apple backend magic to be able to get this actually to work as a stereo pair on your Mac Mini. If you guys wanna see a video of me doing that, showing you guys how to do that and set it up, let me know that down in the comment section below because I can create that video for you guys. That's an option that you guys can go right there. Now, the other option is just go buy some separate desktop speakers. Now, I personally recommend and use the Edifier E25s. I'm a huge fan of Edifier products, the sound as well as the quality. I've been using these for about four years now and they still sound solid like they did day one. I do recommend you guys use these, however, with the 3.5 millimeter cable, plug it right into the back of the Mac Mini since it's gonna be a stationary machine anyway. These speakers do offer Bluetooth connection, but from my experience with these, using Bluetooth with my smartphone and such, the range is just not the best. Literally, if I walk right up out of this room and have my phone paired up to it, it's literally gonna drop connection. But hardwired in anyway is always the way to go, and if this is stationary, why not go ahead and plug it in, right? Now, the last thing, I know I said the last thing was the last thing, but I promise this is the last thing, but I had to throw this in here, is a webcam. Now, back 
in 2020, right at the start of the pandemic, it was nearly freaking impossible like to get a webcam anywhere. Like you legit had to sell your left lung in order to get one. The one that I had was the Logitech Stream Cam. Guys, I'm telling you, it's a really good camera. It has the tracking feature that's kind of similar to center stage camera feature that we saw on the new iPad Pro, as well as the Stream Cam plugs in USB-C. So you don't have to worry about problems with fast connection if you want to do like some game streaming or uh, using it for Zoom as well as Skype calls. You're gonna be good to go with that as well. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you found it helpful, comment down below and let your boy know. And don't forget, to tell me how many likes is on this video at the time of you guys watching it. Thanks again for watching. Check out the other videos right up here on the screen. See y'all in the next one. Squad! <laughs>